What is going on you guys? Welcome back to the channel. So I'm sitting with a guy here that really should need no introduction in the personal finance space and that is Nate O'Brien. And um, I wanted to talk to Nate while I'm sitting with him here about building a personal brand or what I view as probably the best opportunity people have in 2021 to make a million dollar business. Uh, would you say that's probably one of your most solid opportunities right now as a young person is having a personal brand? Yeah, totally. I mean, it, it, it's, it's never been easier to build a personal brand now. You know, you look back 50 years ago, you wanted to build a personal brand, how, how the hell do you do that? Right? right. Like you have to, what, you have to write a book, you have to get a publisher. It's really hard to do that today. It's so easy. I mean, you see people blowing up so quickly, right? Right. Yeah. And so this is going to be kind of an all encompassing video. We're going to talk about how Nate and I got started here with uh, having our own personal brands and building these audiences online because a lot of you guys who watch my videos have found me in probably recent years, but most people don't know. I've been doing this since October of 2016. So I've been doing this now for four years, coming up on five years. And Nate actually was probably, what, my 500th subscriber or I, something like that? I think that? that was probably your 400th subscriber. This yeah. was late 2016. So it's, we're starting to feel old now. Yeah, right? I know. I mean, we're just... like the grandfathers of personal finance here. It's crazy. But Nate was so early and he saw what I was doing. And I almost feel like, Nate, you saw like the potential of what I was doing before I saw it. And because you like immediately after I got started, got into this too with building an audience online. And I feel like you've always just had this like, forward looking vision about like what was really going to happen with because honestly guys when I built this channel and started YouTube I had no idea what I was doing like I I was just doing it for fun whereas I feel like you always saw the potential of what this turns into well there's there was definitely a, a gap in the market you know when I, I went onto YouTube late 2016 a freshman in college and I was looking for a way to make money you know I had like all my other businesses I was doing lawn care firewood and everything but I was looking for something that I could really really work on and it, it was just a gap in the market, you know, when you see uh, there were a couple of finance channels at the time, but they were getting, you know, 20, 30,000 views with a thousand subscribers and there were a right. lot of people looking for it and no content on it. So it was, it was, it was a pretty clear opportunity. And I think right now we're seeing that shift, like not so much on YouTube, but actually in, in, on other yeah, platforms. We're going to get to that later. There's, there's basically to be transparent guys, Nate and I have identified what we think is like the next big opportunity. And we're going to kind of share with you where that platform is and, and what we're seeing. But that's yeah. the, that we're going to get into that later. So just wait a little bit here, guys. But um, yeah, we, we basically want to get into a little bit of a story of our personal brands, how we got started, um, the situation with YouTube and blogging and some of the stuff we're involved with, and then what we view as like the easiest platform for starting your personal brand in 2021. But the first thing I want to address here for the skeptics who say, wait a second, your video is telling us how to go from zero dollars to a million. How do we know, how do they know we're not just smoke and mirrors, you know, trying to sell a course? I, I think we could, right? You know? We can just be smoke and mirrors here. No, but I, I don't think you really sell anything. I, yeah. I don't have any products. I mean, it's uh, like, you don't have to worry about some big pitch here. Like there's no, how to make a million dollars. And it's like, buy my $4,000 yeah. course that shows that, you how to that's make the thing. money. Like, I, yeah, I have sold courses in the past. I do very little of that now. It was less than 3% of my total revenue for 2020. And you don't sell a course right now, do no, you? No, yeah, it's, it's, I don't think you, there's so many other ways to monetize. Right. And I, I just don't see the, the need for it necessarily. So don't worry guys, we're not gonna be teaching you the business model of selling thousand dollar courses. And then you just sell a thousand courses for a thousand dollars and you're a millionaire because you have to sell your soul in the process. And, and I it's think we both like agree that that's not like the strategy we would wanna follow or recommend. So we're not yeah. selling you a course, there's no pitch here. We're just looking to provide you with straight value. And um, honestly, guys, if you have time, pause this video, grab a pen and paper, because we have four to five years of information here of what we've seen with this shift and these trends that we're gonna share with you in like the next 30, 40 minutes. So if you like what Nate and I have done, um, we're gonna basically hand you the playbook. So- We'll try our best. And, yeah, and that we'll being said, guys, too, Nate, is on his way to a million subscribers. By the time I upload this, he might even have surpassed it. Like, But I'm still gonna link his channel up. So if for some reason you're not subscribed to Nate, I want you to subscribe to him after this video and check out what he's doing. Even if you're just watching his channel to spy on him and see what he's doing strategy-wise. Because oh, he, he's, oh, he's got all the, he knows what he's doing. So no matter what, subscribe to Nate for providing this free value here, guys. Um, but that being said, guys, let's start off here by talking about 
how we got into this in the first place. Yeah. You know? Well, it was, it was you who really started first because it was October 2016, right? October 16, I'm working my desk job as a utility worker. And uh, I started this basically as a hobby because I wasn't getting much fulfillment out of my job. So I figured, I don't know, let me throw some videos up on YouTube. I recorded them on my lunch break and I was like, I don't know, that, you know, how to build credit in your 20s. Little videos like this. I had helpful little tidbits of information that I just wanted to share. Yeah. How, how did you get into it yourself? Um, I was, I mean, so I've, I've been investing for when, since I was pretty young. Um, I, I just got lucky. It was like, I like numbers. I, I just ended up in it. Um, no trust fund. People always think that they're like, oh, what the hell is like a 12 year old kid doing investing? But it, it, just the stars aligned with it where uh, there was, it was the recession back in 09. Sure. And then uh, my grandfather and my uncle were just starting to like learn about the stock market, right? And they were putting, you know, 500 bucks into it or something like that. And so they would talk about it like Christmas dinner. And then I was just intrigued by it. And then I also had a school project. I think there was a sixth grade school project where we had to learn about the stock market. So just all the stars aligned. I was like, this is interesting. I want to see this. And so I started with 50 bucks, paid a $10 transaction fee for, for, for a stock, uh, yeah. for, for a $12 stock. So, and then, so yeah, I, I, was invest, I was interested in investing. I was always learning about it, trying to consume content on it, born in the age of the internet, right? So I was born in 98, so I, I grew up with the internet. Right. So we had so many opportunities, like, oh, what is this stock? Let me Google that, because my parents didn't really have a good answer for that. Sorry, sure. mom, if you're watching. Um, but, and, and so I, I just Googled all this information, started to learn this, and then, I was looking for like videos on on YouTube of like a tutorial. How right. how, how do I invest, right? Yeah. And they didn't exist. Um, and, and period, they just yeah. didn't exist. Like I'm I'm telling you guys the same thing. Nate, Kat, Nate, Nate, and I pretty much found this at the same time. Like you would, it's like nowadays when you search for a topic on YouTube, like how to buy stocks, there's thousands of videos. But like picture a time when you would search for that. And there would be no video. There was just it was like it, it would be like it didn't stuff. exist. It'd be like a video of like an elephant. Yeah, or something. like there was it, no relevant video yeah. about the stock market. It was a wide open market. So it was that it was this point where you could do just about anything and get the views. Like I don't think people really understand too how quickly our channels accelerated. Yours took a little more time, but like yeah. I started my channel October of 2016, and I hit 100,000 subscribers by January 1 of 2018. So wow. I, 14 months, I went from zero to 100,000 subscribers. And I know people that it took them nine years to do that. Yeah. So we were able to tap into um, this untapped market. And that does no longer exist on YouTube for finance. Wouldn't you say pretty much like it's pretty saturated? It's, it's, it's fairly saturated in finance now, but there's, the, the point here is that there's always new there's always markets new that are not tapped yes. into. And it, it, it might be on different platforms. There are still untapped markets in YouTube. Um, but it's, it's, it's really all about finding those markets. And we'll probably talk about that a little bit in this video. But in a sense, I, I do think that we've got, we got pretty lucky with sure. being at the right place at the right time. And sometimes people like to pawn this off as like, oh, you know, I, I just, I'm a genius or I, I know what I'm doing. But really, I think it's, it's a lot of luck, but then it's also looking at an opportunity and then being able to act on that opportunity yeah. that I think it's, it's really difficult to have both of those things line up there with like, being in the right place at the right time and also yeah. saying, you know what, I'm just gonna send this because it's a big opportunity here. Yeah, and, that, and that's important to understand here too is that like Nate and I, I'm gonna tell you right now, I'm best, like Nate's one of my best friends. I'll tell you, we don't have any special abilities. Like, do you feel like you have some special ability that made you successful that other people don't have? No, I mean, I, neither do I. I'm like, I, I don't have one. At, at the same time, I mean, just being totally honest, I don't have like the big story of like, oh, I dropped out of high school. I feel like Gary Vee, yeah. I got 1.8 GPA or something, nothing against him, but like, I don't have like that whole thing. But um, I'm not, I'm not that smart. Like, my IQ is yeah. probably average. Like, you know, same I'm, here, guys. Like, I was, people, yeah. I was like B student in high school. Um, went to community college. Um, I've never been like the smartest person as far as grades. I never took the SATs on any of that stuff. Like, so I just wanted to make sure you understand that like Nate and I are not sitting here and we're not, we're not, we don't have these massive brands based on some special skill. It's just like we saw an opportunity and we just moved on it. That's what it's all about. And so let's talk about now how we feel our brands are worth a million dollars. Because I know a lot of people looking at this, that's a big number. And it's probably a number that you've never even like wrapped your head around. Because, you know, when you think about jobs, a job is going to make you anywhere from, let's say, like 40K to like maybe you make like 150K for a really good job that's like well qualified. But like we're trying to say these businesses are worth a million dollars. And we're saying that based on 
the five-year value of these businesses because I feel like my business is worth, my personal brand is worth five times my profit for a given year because I think we have at least a five-year window where we're still going to have people watching us in some form. So I don't think there's really much questioning that like if your business is making at least 200K per year that you're worth a million dollars. Yeah, that, that's totally true. I think the only problem with personal brand here um, is it's you can't really sell it, right? So it's you. Right. Um, and so, for example, if, if I was going to stop my personal brand, which you know I have 900 some thousand subscribers now, if, if I was just going to totally stop it, it would probably over the next five years, like it would still make me probably you know a, a decent amount of money, but it would have a certain level of decay. Yep. But I can't necessarily walk away from it very easily, and that's the one problem I do have with it, which is why you know if we're talking about building businesses like some type of media company right doesn't matter youtube TikTok, twitter whatever i i think there is a lot more value in actually outside of your personal brand yeah and i don't know if that's the direction that you wanted to take this video but like i think right now what i'm focusing on is building businesses that are not connected directly to my face right. um i'm all about that guys because i'm not again something that you may not know about me in 2018, I sat down with a friend of mine from high school and we, we started a blog called investingsimple.com. Uh, at the time it was dot blog, we didn't even have the domain for it. And like that business, we feel now based on our revenue, and this isn't just on our assumption, like based on our net profit for what we're doing each month, we're worth 1.5 to $2 million. Yeah, that's crazy that too because people, I And remember, it's sellable, it's something you can sell. Yeah, oh I think mean, that's God, so yeah. important. Because Nate, what Nate is saying is, our personal brands like Nate O'Brien and Ryan Scribner, we can't sell this because otherwise we'd have to go work for them and I'm not going to work for somebody. Yeah. We'll just do it ourselves. Whereas what we're focused on building going forward is something that's saleable, like a brand, a standalone brand that you can build up and then you hand over the keys to someone else and you let them run it. And you can still be the face of it too. Like you, right. could, you could have a YouTube channel that's not your name, but it's just a brand and you can still be the one making the videos but you can also probably outsource those videos as well. Right. So, you know, it can go either way. It's like, you can still, like you don't feel like you have to outsource it right away and hire people. A lot of people can't do that right away. Right. So I would say that, you know, you have an idea now of our backstory. Nate and I did have a lot of the right place, right time going on, but we also were very resourceful, I think. And we were able to have you more so, you had the foresight of like, what was what we were really building. Like I remember one of our texts where I said to you, I'm like, we're gonna become millionaires in the next 10 years. And you were like, pretty sure we're gonna do that in like a lot quicker time. <laughs> I'm not there that, yet, yeah. guys. I'm not saying I'm a millionaire, but like I do feel my businesses are worth, you know, at least a million dollars based on their profit that they're making now. And so I think you always saw what we were actually building versus just, um, you know, having a more short term view on it. Yeah, I, I guess I, I kind of went into it with like, as like a business idea, because I think a lot of people stumble into the YouTube or TikTok, whatever we're talking about. A lot of people just kind of stumble into it. There's nothing yep. wrong with it. But, and I think those people actually face a lot of creator burnout as well, because they, they went into it just to make videos for fun. Yeah. Uh, and then suddenly, next thing they know, like they're pulling in hundreds of thousands of dollars. They, they need to get a manager, they need to figure all this stuff out. And I, I guess probably went in, I went into it a little bit more focused on like, okay, I make videos, the videos will make money, it'll also grow my brand. Um, but speaking of money though, I, um, you know, I really view any money that we make from our personal brands as like a byproduct, as right. something that, you know, it's, it's nice to have, but I'm not gonna focus too much on the money. It, sure. I feel like it always follows. Yeah, no, I completely agree. And like also guys, keep in mind that when I started my YouTube channel, my goal was to provide value. And mm -hmm. I'm sure you've heard this a million times, we're not gonna beat a dead horse here, but like, you should always go into this from the mindset of like, I want to provide value, I want to provide solutions, and I want to help people. And as a byproduct, there's always a way to monetize any audience. So you guys have an idea now of our backstory. We did stumble into it a little bit, but there was some careful planning and we were resourceful. And I don't think that most people would doubt that our personal brands are million dollar businesses at this point, um, yeah. just based on the future earnings and the valuation. So now what I want to talk about is how is this something that somebody in 2021 watching this video with zero followers on anything could actually start getting the gears turning and start this direction? Because I'm gonna tell you right now, guys, what we're gonna talk about is building a million dollar business over the next three to five years. It's probably very unlikely to do that in one year, wouldn't you say? 
It, it, it's harder to do it in one year. I mean, I've seen a couple of people do it. I've seen people go from zero to half a million subscribers on like, YouTube uh, in let's, a year. Let's say Andre, you know, Andre Andre G. did it very quickly, yeah. What did he do different? He saw a market of combining high level cinematography with finance information. Like he basically just made this market. He just raised the bar. He yeah. raised the quality bar and he was able to like accelerate because of his level of rev like change and just being so disruptive in this space. Yeah, totally, totally. So it's not impossible, it's unlikely. But um, what do you think is like, let, let's, let's put Nate O'Brien back in square one. Let's say you didn't start the YouTube channel. It's 2021, you're actually watching this video, mm -hmm. okay? What would you do if okay. you're starting from scratch? Right now? Like right now, mm -hmm. yeah. This video is going up in January 2021. Like what is your action plan right now? 100% is TikTok, yeah. and I think a lot of people saw that coming. Um, it's most definitely TikTok. I, I see people blowing up on it so much, but it's it's so undervalued the the, the level of exposure that you can get from nothing, and the, and the, how fast you can grow. As long as you're able to build that brand and not be like a sellout, like I've seen a couple of the sellouts already. They're like pitching some weird insurance products on, yeah. on TikTok and stuff. Um, and it it also depends on on your niche that you're in. So I think probably a lot of people who watch your videos are probably already considering maybe finance or something related to that. Um, but find something on TikTok, which I still think that finance on TikTok has so much more room to grow. Yeah. You, you, you use that as like the top of the funnel. Like you use TikTok as the thing where you get the exposure. And I think Mark Tilbury did this really well. He was the fastest growing TikToker just the other day. Like he gained like half a million followers in a day or something like that. Um, but you start with TikTok, you get the exposure, you get people to recognize your brand, your face, right? Um, even if it's not your face, like you, you just get them to recognize your logo, whatever it is. And then you use that amount of exposure that you can get on TikTok, which you know you could be getting tens of millions of, of impressions every month um, per, pretty easily. I, I don't wanna say extremely easily, but like I've seen so many people do it. And like I put out yeah. one TikTok, I get like 700,000 views right. from like 100 followers, like just instantly. Um, so that's what I would start with. I would start with TikTok as the top of the funnel and then build out your YouTube channel. This is what Mark did. I, I tell people about this all the time because I watched Mark Tilbury do this. If you guys don't know who he is, he's like four and a half million followers on TikTok, gives a lot of finance advice. Um, but you start with TikTok, you get the exposure, the brand recognition, then you make the YouTube videos and you funnel people from TikTok to your YouTube. It increases your click-through rate because people already recognize you, they already trust you, so they're more likely to watch your videos over other people. Right. That makes so much sense. And I feel like the reason people aren't doing this is because it's not instant gratification. There's not much instant gratification on TikTok unless you just want the vanity metrics, mm -hmm. the, the likes, the followers. And this is the thing that I think people don't get this. Like when Nate and I started YouTube channels, there was no money in YouTube. No, we had nothing. no, there was nothing. Like we would make videos and that was before you had to have a thousand subscribers and 4,000 minutes of watch time hours, I mean, and that doesn't matter. Like, get that out of your head. Like, that is such a small amount of traffic and watch time that like, that should never be your deciding factor to not do something because yeah. that's no money, trust me. But when we started, like, we were doing this probably, like I was doing it 20, 30 hours a week. Were you also at that level? Yeah, I mean, I was in college, but I was right. still, I remember I would actually, um, I didn't tell anybody that I had a YouTube channel until I had about 10,000 subscribers. Like they found it, like my right. friends in college, I didn't tell them. Yeah. Um, so I'd be like, hey guys, I'm going to study. And then I'd go to a classroom and just crank out videos at like 2 a.m. on a Friday night. And um, yeah, but I think my first year I did like $900. Yeah, was, like, for a year, year of work. And yeah. so that's the thing guys, everyone's gonna focus on where the money is right now. And the money is in blogging still, and it's very much in YouTube. YouTube is like the new money. Oh, it's yeah. kind of like now, Everyone's trying to do that. Like every day, probably a dozen or so people probably or more start a YouTube channel in finance. Maybe even more oh, than that. Way, How way many, more than that. So hundreds many. a day starting. Yeah. Like so many people are going, oh, I see what Graham Stephan's doing. I see what Ryan's doing, Nate O'Brien. But the thing is, I, I want to say this politely, you're about five years late for, for, for YouTube what finance, we, yes. for what we yes. did. Okay. So it's going to be very difficult to do what we did unless you do what Andre did and you do something so different and so revolutionary that it just becomes the new standard of quality across the board. Yeah. So let's actually just zoom out a little bit so people can get a better understanding here of like media and how people are consuming content because this is really important to understand this if you're trying to build some type of media business, personal brand, whatever it might be. You have to understand where the traffic has been. So traditionally, you know, say, okay, let's, let's, let's go way back. 
from you know any time up to uh, the the mid '90s or the late '90s, it, it was all just books, right? People books, maybe some seminars. That was that was how people got their information. Sure. Maybe radios, newspapers, whatever, right? But then it shifted to blogs, and blogs kind of took that reign for I would say from the year 2000 through 2015 in yeah. terms of where they got their information, right? right? So for about 15 years, blogs were it. And uh, contrary to like what a lot of people think, they think that blogs make like you know like what 100 bucks a month or something. We know a lot of bloggers, especially in the finance niche, who are literally, well, yeah. I'm not to that level yet, but Alliance like. Alliance is growing a lot, yeah. but we know bloggers who have a finance blog that are literally pulling in a million dollars a month. And oh, it's, yeah, it's yeah. Like, it's like. It's a number that's insane. It's a number that you tell people. And even, the, uh, I mean, like, I'm, I can't share full numbers about investing simple because I have multiple business partners and it's not something that you'd want to run around saying, hey, I'm doing all, because you're going to, yeah. all you do is get more eyeballs on it and then more people are going to exploit the opportunity. Yeah. So we do well with it. I'm not making a million a month, but like there's a lot more money than you would think. Okay, so 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 we had this wave of blogging where there's like big money in blogging, right? And then it, it shifted probably from about 2015 to 2020 now, uh, and it'll probably keep going, where the money's in YouTube. Like that's yeah. where you see the ad rates are skyrocketing. You can get affiliate products, the sponsor rates are insane. Uh, and so probably from, I, I would estimate probably from like 2015 through maybe the next two years still, YouTube is gonna be like the reigning champion in terms of like where all the money is, the best position to be in. Um, and then now it's shifting even more into, into TikTok, shorter content, right. uh, easier to consume, a lot faster to consume, a uh, little quicker dopamine hits, right? But just understanding those shifts in where and how people are consuming content. Because if you look at the overall amount of Google searches, yes, they're still going up, but it's shifted dramatically from, you know, let's say I want to learn how to invest. Uh, if I wanted to do that five years ago, I would just search on Google because nothing came up on YouTube and I knew nothing was going to come up on YouTube. Right. But now, if I want to learn how to invest, I'm probably going to go to YouTube before I go to Google because I right. want to watch a video, right? Absolutely. So understanding those trends is really crucial. Yeah, and I think people are so focused on the name of the company or the platform versus the media itself. Like, we're not, like, I'm not so much about TikTok as I am about short form content. That's what I think we're both getting at here is, yeah. it, is it went from like print to web print, which is well, blogging, reading, yeah. to web video, to now short web video, and then it's gonna go somewhere else after that. Yeah. If you just keep an eye on what people are consuming, and then you just figure out the big winners there, and that's the thing guys, like maybe TikTok isn't the big winner, maybe Instagram Reels Pulls a Hail Mary. I don't Mary. think so. I don't, think, I don't so. think so either, but like it's so easy to be omnipresent because you just take your TikToks and you put them on Reels. And so you just do both. And it's yeah. just a matter of, hey, I made this video, I'm gonna put it in two places. It's harder with YouTube because like the, there's always been talk of a big YouTube competitor. It's never really happened, and I don't gonna, think it will. It's it's not gonna happen because with, with Facebook, they, they don't have a search engine for it. Right. It's, it's not easily accessible. So, and, and, and that's the biggest thing that's gonna end up hurting them. So basically YouTube is gonna turn into like a video blog, which right. you know, vlog, that's where the word came from, but like a video blog. And so it's gonna be this library that you can go back and look on. Um, so YouTube has still easily an, another decade of life in it. It's not going anywhere. Um, it's gonna get harder to tap into it, just like blogs are, but it's still always possible. Cause like your blog, you started blogging in 2018, people thought you were nuts. Right, um, and we had a rough time at the beginning. Like in 2019, summer of 2019, the blog was losing $2,000 plus per month. Wow. My business partner and I were like looking at each other like, what are we doing? Yeah. Like we're literally burning money. We're setting money on fire. And then it just, again, it panned out and it worked, but like it took some time. Um, but yeah, I would say like, what you wanna focus on is not what works right now. Because whatever works right now, Everyone is aware that it's working and it's probably being exploited, yeah. right? What's working right now for us is YouTube content, but for a brand new entrant into this, it's gonna be really hard. So instead of focusing on where the money is and what everyone's focusing on, focus on where the money will be. And I think that's what we've been talking totally. about the most over the last couple of days. Because Nate and I are now at the point where we're trying to figure out like, we're year four of a YouTube channel is there a year 10? Is there a year 15? Who knows? But like there will still be people looking for information, but where are they going to go for that information? Yeah. And I really do agree. It's short form video and probably the answer is TikTok. Totally. But it's also, uh, even if you're on the same platform, you know, it's, it's finding ways to innovate to keep your channel growth. Because the worst thing that I see happen with YouTubers uh, is they start a channel and maybe they have their, their, you know, their rise, right? They get half a million subscribers and then 
something happens, right? They just keep putting out the same content, but the viewers die off. Like they don't get as many views. And they used to get half a million views per video. Now they're getting 4,000 views per video. Right. But you see them like still grinding and just like going, 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 trying yeah. to like, you can tell that they're barely making it by now because they're making the same content and they're not looking at it zoomed out and saying, okay, how do we yeah. map this out so that we can change? Like, for example, every year I change the strategy for my content. I change the style, how we craft our videos. And I think this is crucial to do because if you're still making, if, if you're still making the same, like, Okay, for example, if you were still making the same videos um, that you were making three years ago. You, honestly, Nate, you can use me as an example because my channel at the end of 2020 was doing, was at a three year low. And it was because of exactly what you're saying. I was doing the same thing I've been doing for three and a half years. Yeah. And that's why I had to like flip my channel on its head and start trying new things. So for a while I did higher quality cinematic type videos trying to do like the Andre approach mm -hmm. that just doesn't resonate with me because I'm not into like the video stuff. So I instead, you know, tried other things. Um, and I'm, we're not going to give you all of our secrets here, but I mean, you can kind of uh, look around, but like it's, it's, it's something you would notice, but I'm not, we're not going to give you everything, you know, but honestly guys, like it's a matter of just trying different things and experimenting, Yeah, you totally, know, totally experimenting and not being afraid to flip things on their head and just break things kind of, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm even if the video bombs or it does well, like you just have to be just continuing to change and optimize and just be different. And I feel like it's those who just cling to what worked and then it doesn't work. Those are the ones that end up falling off. And I think that's where you can tell the difference between, and not to sound like conceited here or something, but like that, that's where you can tell the difference between somebody who's just kind of like a one hit wonder, like just kind of like stumbled into it totally or people who are really focusing on the big picture, strategizing, maneuvering, right, pivoting. You're, you always have to pivot, right? Think about a business like, um, say that you're you're selling uh, radios, right? Look at Radio Shack. They weren't able to pivot. Like right. they, whoever's managing them. I mean, I don't know. I actually know. Okay, well. Um, <laughs> anyway, so like whoever was managing them, like they they went bankrupt. Radio right. Shack went bankrupt because they weren't able to pivot. And maybe it was impossible for them to pivot because they were literally selling like electronics. But Best Buy was able to do something like that, right? So so there's always a way to do that. But you always have to be thinking in the future. What's happening five years from now? What does it look like? And how do I make sure that I'm best positioned for that? Because right. right now people are just thinking about the, the, the now. Yeah. And if you're thinking about the now, if you're thinking about what's happening today, what's working today, you're losing. That's, that's just 100%. my opinion on that. Yeah. And like my b best example of what Nate's talking about there is like Netflix versus Redbox. For a while mm -hmm. they were doing almost the same thing, which was serving discs, disc-based me disc media to consumers. Netflix was simply mailing it to you. Redbox was doing it at the grocery store. Netflix said, no, we're going to pivot to streaming and now look at Redbox versus Netflix. And Redbox, no the problem with Redbox is that they said, oh, we're making a ton of money on, if, if you guys don't know what we're talking about, it's like you, you go into the grocery store and you see like the, the kiosk, like the vending machine that has uh, all the uh, uh, movies in it, right? Yeah. And that was really big in like maybe 2010 era, like give or take a few years, right? Um, but they looked at it and I don't like, I haven't looked into their actual business itself, but I'm assuming they looked at it and said, oh, we're making a ton of money with these DVD rentals. Let's double down on this and put more money back into putting out more of these kiosks, right? right? Instead of Netflix, who's also doing something similar, but they said, instead of putting more money into DVDs, which are going to go extinct in five or 10 years, let's instead shift to online streaming. And right. that was the big difference between those two. And they were getting into something that wasn't yet popular. Yeah. So that's what we're getting at here, guys, is like, in order to really pull this off, you need to start focusing on what's not as big today, but that's where everyone is going. And I'm very confident as well that it is short form video. So I kind of want to take the last section here and let's just talk some basic strategy for TikTok because I feel like mm -hmm. we both have a good idea and I don't think people fully understand. I feel TikTok is the most fair algorithm, the most level playing field that exists as far as platforms go, because you can have people that are brand new to TikTok make a million view TikTok on their first video. I've seen it happen so many times. And you're just not going to get that with Google and blogging and YouTube. Would you agree yeah. with that? Oh, totally. And it, you know, so many things come back to basic supply and demand. And I, I don't know if, if, if some of my subscribers are watching this, you know, I always talk about supply and demand, but I love economics, by the way. But it, it's really, you just got to look at so. Anything in business, you say, how much supply is there? How much demand is there, right? And right now, there's so much demand. There's so many people on TikTok. I think the average person on TikTok is spending about 80 minutes per day on TikTok. Wow. Yeah, 
insane amounts of time. It's like this, this portal, like you just go into it and suddenly like you're in TikTok for two hours and you thought it was five minutes. It's, it's kind of concerning actually. Yeah. But um, so there, there's so much demand on TikTok. There's so many people trying to watch TikToks, but there's not that many people creating TikToks still, right? Mm -hmm. And so there's so much demand, not very much supply. If you can be on this end here, you win, right? And, and, and that's what it's all about. And right now the supply and demand for YouTube is probably about level here yeah um i would even find argue that, it's found equal i would even argue it's well above the viewership honestly like yeah if you look at some of the statistics about the amount of video being uploaded to youtube per minute it's like an insane amount of content whereas like there's way more people creating than watching i think on youtube at this point yeah so so it's sort of like an actionable plan that that, that people can use here for, yeah. for for what we would suggest doing um do you have any thoughts on that specifically? Because I have a hundred percent, guys. And I mean, like, I I dabbled with TikTok a little bit when it first came out, more or less. Like January of this year, when it was getting big, I dabbled. All right, and I should have stuck with it because I made like five TikToks in one afternoon, and three of those TikToks did over five hundred thousand views. And it was just concepts. It was like budgeting concepts, 50, 30, 20 rule, basic stuff like that. And I had one TikTok that I shot that I did it in a parking lot of a Target. And like four hours later, I opened my phone and I, it had two million views in four hours. That's insane. And I gained like 30,000 followers from one TikTok. Wow. So, and you don't get that with other platforms. No. Like that doesn't happen with YouTube very rarely. But I've seen it happen with TikTok so many times. It just happened to my friend who went to a float spa and he thought it was super cool. He made a video about it, 500K views in 24 hours. He went from a TikTok page when I last talked to me at 16 followers right in the last two days he's only been doing this for three weeks in the last two days a million people have seen him yeah a million insane. eyeballs and you can use that for you know well there's perks to it like like sometimes you're just walking down the street and someone's like hey yeah. i love you it, like, it just kind of like you get that level of um celebrity status kind of thing is that where you get yeah. at a little bit but it's not it's not it's not going to look like it does now in two years so this is the opportunity and it's not going to be an opportunity in two years. It's not going to be an opportunity in right. two years. Because in two years, everyone's going to be doing TikTok because the money's going to be there now. The eyeballs are going to be there. And then the supply is going to be there. Yeah. Right now, there's, like you said, high demand, low supply. And honestly, guys, as far as TikTok strategy goes, just look at what's working for other people. Seriously. Yeah, yeah, don't like, reinvent the wheel. Don't reinvent the wheel. I want you to take that notebook that I know you have out because you've been watching <laughs> and I want you to go look at Mark Tilbury and who else? Uh, Humphrey Yang. Humphrey Yang. And maybe some guys. other non-finance TikTokers and just like watch 10 or 20 TikToks but jot down like even if you script some of them out like look at the script. There's a I'm not giving it away guys because like I want you to do a little bit of work here but like all I'm saying is there's a formula. Yeah, and the and formula is wor works and it's repeatable. And it's just analyzing, you know. So I actually used to do this a lot when I I would say, you know, how how do I grow my YouTube channel? I would look at the biggest or the fastest growing channels and say, what are they doing? And start to really analyze. Okay, well, Mr. Beast's videos they're all 14 minutes long. He must know something. Like so, right. you start to really look. How do people start the videos on TikTok? I know, especially it's all about not having any downtime. Like you have to literally right. you have to make edits like that. Like you have to cut, 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 cut because people have really short attention spans now. It's kind of like goldfish, and we just want constant information. So if you have any lulls or lags there, it's it's it, people are going to drop off, and it's not going to go 100%. off. Hundred percent. I will give you guys one good nugget, and this came from one of the biggest personal finance TikTokers out there. Uh, I'm not going to mention names just because, I don't, you know, it might be something that he is more of like a secret, but what, it's not really a big secret, guys, but like it's enough of a nugget to help you. If you're doing a TikTok, script out, like write the script for your TikTok on paper, and then I want you to erase as many words as possible and convey that message in as little words as possible. Yeah. To be as efficient as possible. So like, don't make a 45 second TikTok if you can do it in 20. Even if you feel like you're not conveying it as well, convey the message in the simplest way possible in the fewest amount of words and lead with something that's emotional. Whether it's sadness, crying, anger, whatever. Like, lead with emotion, convey your message in the shortest way possible and be concise. And yeah, don't reinvent the wheel. I love it. Yeah. Anything else you want to add here? Or you think this is, I mean, I th honestly, guys, like, this has been a good I have one playbook. thing. Yeah. I have one thing. Look, so a lot of people say you got to push through, right? And, and, and if you watch Gary Vaynerchuk, which I don't want to talk poor on him because like he's, he's great, but I think it's a big misconception right now that people say, oh, if, you're, if you have a YouTube channel, you have a TikTok and it's not working, just put your head down and grind until you're 29 and just work, work, work. 
that, I think that's one of the worst things you can do because people end up, and I've seen this all the time. I know people who started channels, YouTube channels, four years ago, and they're making the same stuff, and they put out a thousand videos, and they have five hundred subscribers. Right, they're because, spinning their tires. Yeah, they're just sitting there spinning their tires, and so so you always need to look at the big picture, and like you know, like I I like to. So people think that I don't work a lot because you might only see one video on my personal channel like every couple of weeks, but I'm always strategizing, I'm always working on the big picture and trying to find more efficient routes. And so if you are in the position right now where you're a content creator and it's not working, it might be time to take a big step back, analyze everything that you're doing and go back to the drawing board. Yeah. And I think it's important a lot of people don't do that. Yeah, like for example, um, a friend of ours was struggling with his YouTube channel just like we were. And like, again, we're not going to name names just because there's, it doesn't add any value to the story here. But like what he did was pretty much take weeks off yeah. where he was only uploading every two or three weeks. His numbers were going way down. But what he did was rebuild an entire brand new recording studio, all new equipment, change literally everything about his videos. Like mm -hmm. tour, it's like tearing that business and that building down to the ground and rebuilding and questioning everything. And, and don't be afraid to do that. Like yeah. if, 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 and if then he posted the video down. and that video, we're not gonna say the video, but it's making him what, like three, four grand a day? Yeah, he's Three, a... four grand a day from one YouTube video. And we, again, we're not gonna tell you everything, but like, just know this is happening behind the scenes. And it's somebody we know, and he tore it down to the foundation and rebuilt the whole house. Yeah. So don't be afraid to do that if you are a content creator that's spinning their wheels right now, because that's what I did too, more or less, you know, you tear it down, you start over and you don't be afraid to break stuff, you yeah, know? Totally. Love 100%. it. 100%. So, all right, guys, I think that's going to wrap this up here. This was, uh, I felt super valuable. And, you know, if you guys thought it was valuable too, all that I ask is that you just thumbs up the video. And if you made it to the very end, guys, leave me a comment and let me know what you thought about this. And I'm going to do my best to respond to those comments too, if you have like a burning question here. And of course, Nate doesn't need the subscribers at this point. He's going to hit a million soon and I'm super proud of him. But if you're not for some reason subscribed to Nate, look at how much value he just provided in this 30 minutes. He's got more to offer you. So drop down in the description, subscribe to his channel and leave him a comment that said like, yo, I came from that interview with Ryan just so he knows that people are coming over. Yeah, but thanks. Yeah, man. Thanks for coming on been a great discussion even I feel like I've learned things in this so yeah, I hope yeah. you guys got a lot of value out of it uh, make sure you subscribe guys hit that bell for notifications so you see more videos like this anything else you want to add I don't think so thanks for watching all right guys that's gonna wrap it up and I will see you in the next video